It is my third and final curriculum picks video for the 2022-2023 school year. And it is by far my favorite. It is preschool time. If you're new here, I'm Ryan, a christ following wife and a homeschool mom to three boys. Here we talk all things homeschool and we will learn together how to use our roles as wife, mom, teacher, and homemaker in order to glorify God. So if you've been following our preschool journey this past year, um, then none of these will be that much of a surprise. Um, but I do have a couple things that are new and I just wanted them to be all in one concise location. For those of you who do ask over on Instagram and stuff, what are you using for preschool? I can point you here. So this is, I guess, technically pre-K. Some people say there's a difference between preschool and pre-K. I don't know. Maybe preschool is more like three slash four and pre-Ks, four slash five, I don't know. But we're in our second year of preschool is how I always put it. <laughs> um, and so the following year, 2023, is when he will be starting kindergarten. And that makes me sad. So we're not gonna talk about that. So our core program that we're going to be using, um, I won't say rigorously, but I plan on you know doing the whole thing, is Sunlight Pre-K. So we did Sunlight Tea this past year which is kind of their pre-pre-kindergarten. This is full on pre-kindergarten. And that is, this covers history, Bible, literature, language arts, development, and science. And so this covers a little bit of everything. Um, for Bible, within that, we will be using 101 favorite stories from the Bible. I have not used this Bible before, but the one we used this year with sunlight was really good, so I'm hoping this one is too. And he will still be joining in on our family Bible time at night, and he typically sits in on our Bible lessons for homeschool in the morning anyway, so he'll be getting plenty of Bible. For history, they kind of start talking about the concept of time and how things change over time. Um, they also hit on kind of different things around the world and different cultures around the world, more like culture awareness, like your little bubble right here on your street is not all there is. And so I love that they do, of course, all of that through just really good books because that's kind of Sunlight's MO. It's, it's bring out the good books and learn from them. And so that being said, they're also doing that with language arts. They have, I think the Dr. Seuss ABC book is kind of like their core spine for their language arts and they start talking a little bit more about phonics and then they have one of those like my first words books that they're going to start talking more about like different words to add to the vocabulary so it is a obvious very gentle approach but i have something to help that because you know me i have to like just be a little extra when it comes to preschool especially i don't know i have a problem but we'll talk about that in a minute then we'll just have plain old read alouds which the only purpose is just to expose them to good literature and get them loving books. And then they also have what I'm probably most excited about for this curriculum. They have these development books I had never heard of. They've been around since the 80s and I don't know how I've never heard of them, but they are called Developing the Early Learner. And these are books that focus a lot on perception. These focus on motor skills, visual skills, auditory skills, and comprehension skills. And so there are four of them and you just, you have to go in order because they do build on each other and it helps you as the mom and teacher understand their strengths and weaknesses. It helps you kind of assess where they are, what you need to work on. And all of these things that they're learning are kind of the basis for learning to read and the basis for working out math problems. Um, you know, you have to learn about things going from left to right and top to bottom. You have to learn, you know, are you right hand dominant or left hand dominant, you know, in the very beginning stages. And then there's like just a lot of, okay, the teacher's going to say this and see how long it takes them to follow directions. I've heard that there's also exercises like, I'm gonna give you a list of directions and then you have to wait one minute and then follow those directions. So it's about memory, it's about retaining things, like looking for visual differences in things and a lot of, okay, turn around and you do a sound. Okay, was I clapping or was I closing a book? Um, and so I think it's really cool. It's not independent work for sure. It is definitely teacher intensive and hands-on, but it's, they say to do it in 10 to 15 minutes a day. And it's just to get them used to using those skills, those auditory, visual, um, all those different skills that they're going to need throughout their life of learning. And then for science, again, this is all through just good books but we will be learning about simple machines. We'll be doing some very elementary earth science. 
um, talking about some animals and seasons and changes and things like that. And that's our core and that is more than enough to do by itself. I always have to preface this because people are like, why do you do so much? I don't know. I have a problem. I told you, <laughs> but that's our core. It is more than enough by itself. However, we are also throwing in some extras. Now these things I will not do every day and I will not do them front to back without skipping a lesson. Okay, that's not what these are for, for me. I am going to add in some handwriting, which I have decided this year to also switch him to a reason for handwriting, just like his fourth grade brother, well, third going into fourth grade brother. The reason being is we did the Good and the Beautiful handwriting last year. And for his level, I mean, it's just like practicing tracing lines. It's it's nothing special. But seeing the older levels of the Good and the Beautiful handwriting, I wasn't thrilled with it. And so I don't want to keep him going in the Good and the Beautiful knowing that I'm going to change it later anyway. And so we picked a reason for handwriting because it is scripturally based. Now, this being said, they do not have a preschool level. They have kindergarten. But I think it is a good starting spot, especially because I am self-pacing this. I am not, like I said, aiming to have this done by the end of the year for any reason. If I do, great. But if not, I am not stressed about it. So I'm okay with him leveling up. Um, it actually says in the description of this book that it would be okay for some preschoolers. Um, because in the beginning, they're literally just tracing lines, tracing circles, which he's been doing for the past year and a half. <laughs> so I think it will be gentle enough for him. But by the end of the year, they are working on forming letters themselves. If I don't think he's ready, I'll stop him and we'll wait. Um, but I really think he'll be okay with it because he's already writing his name. So I know that letter formation isn't too far off. And then I feel like sunlight is a little light on the math. They do introduce numbers. We're still working on our numbers and counting and correlating you know, the written number to an actual number of objects, stuff like that in sunlight. But I found that their preschool this past year was kind of eh, light on that. And from what I can see, they're going to be pretty light on it again in this preschool level. I mean, obviously they're going to be doing things a little harder, but I want to introduce them to a little more math this year. And so we are actually going to be using mathematical reasoning. So they have a beginning one and a beginning two. These are from, I think, the Critical Thinking Company. And I flipped through this and I am so excited about it. And so this is, yes, it's counting. Yes, it's um, your typical preschool math. But it is so much to do with reasoning. And I love that. So you'll have, you know, for example, a bunch of shapes and they all have different colors. And then the instructions are, I'm thinking of a shape. It is not red. So in their mind, they have to go, okay, it's not red. Let's cross off all the reds. It does not have four corners. Okay, cross off all the ones with four corners. It is not yellow. Okay, cross off, you know, things like that where they're actually having to reason, which is why it's called mathematical reasoning. And it's stuff that they might encounter in real life situations. And so it is introducing um, addition. It's introducing some of those basic concepts, but in a way where it's more like real life. And so another example, there's a picture of a birthday cake with X amount of candles. How old is Marla turning? And then you write the number. How old was she on her last birthday? Write the number. How old will she be on her next birthday? Write the number. And so it's the, those simple concepts, but I love the way it's presented in typical like everyday situations that you're going to face. And then just as kind of icing on the cake, we are going to continue with Alphabet Adventures through the summer. And if we're not done by the end of summer, um, we are going to keep going because it is an adventure. It's fun. Um, again, I really think this program could stand alone, especially if you are just a little more like fun, hands-on hands preschool teacher. That's how you like to do things. That's how your kid responds to things. Then this is definitely enough to do by itself. But my friend Rachel, who makes this curriculum, will understand because she's also a rigorous homeschooler <laughs> that I just like to be a little extra. And um, I think she is not offended at all by me using her curriculum as kind of icing on the cake because it is fun and he does learn a lot from it. So, you know, it's alphabet. So you're learning your letter sounds, you're learning your letter shapes, but in fun and tactile ways. And then she has so many activities and so many good book recommendations in there. And so again, we will not be doing this rigorously every day, exactly how she has it laid out. If you did it like that, it would be amazing. But because I'm also doing sunlight, we're just going to kind of pick and choose 
and just see how long it takes us to finish. I don't, I don't care if we finish by the end of summer or if we do it all next year. Um, but my son has a blast with it and it's a really good curriculum. So I want to keep using it. So needless to say, if you can't tell already, I love preschool and we have a really, really fun year ahead. Um, thankfully I still have one baby coming up after him. So in a few years, we'll be doing this all over again, but I'm having a blast with preschool while we're here in the midst of it. And so let me know down below, what is your favorite grade to teach if you're a homeschool mom or if you're a public school teacher, I guess. And let me know, have you used any of these curriculums I've talked about? If not, what are some of your favorite preschool curriculums? And thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.